God has given me, we are made for signs and wonders. Stop me. I am going to have my harvest. I don't care whether I'm in order or not in order. Whether I'm under protocol or no protocol. Whether it is legal or it's not legal. I am going to get my miracle. If you dare to be out of order tonight or reach God. If you dare to be out of protocol tonight or reach God. I tell you your new season. Your new season is here. The Lord said I'm healing you. The world break down. The saints should break for our joy. With light and power and vigor and vitality. And if Christ ever healed, he can heal today. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah. He came, he saw, and he conquered. One of the greatest lessons I have learned is that Nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for him to pay attention. God does not reward our good with evil. When we do something good in his name, when we do something good for him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shalt thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody say amen. Prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophecies, thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Thank you, every one of us. Stand to your feet. This is a mighty sanctuary for which we give God the glory. I want to thank Archbishop Bolden and family, and you family from Tampa, for coming to support us here tonight. I thank God that this is an inspiration ground. I say this is an inspiration ground. 
This is a beautiful place that anyone who believes in good should rejoice about. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting us tonight. If Jesus were here physically tonight, he will ask you two questions. Number one, why are you here? Number two, what do you want? He will not say more than that. Many times we are in the church not asking God anything. And many times we just take it as a routine. I read one day in my Bible. It said, this is your life. Serving God is your life. Knowing Christ is your life. And just in case you are here tonight to ask God nothing for yourself, ask him something for me. Did you hear that? Just in case you don't know why you are here tonight, be here for me. Because to be in the house of God, I don't know why you are there. It's a waste of time. And then to be in the house of God, to ask God nothing, is also a waste of time. So you must not miss the two things. Why are you here? To worship the Lord. Why are you here? To ask him. I love what you did for us just now. I'm going to adopt it at home. For the pastor to ask every family to come out tonight. That's something new. And what I say is this. Whatever you find that is good in where you go, take it home. Amen. When, when I came to America first time about 30 years ago, the press men asked me, America is a terrible place. What did you see? I said, I said only good things. If you are looking for bad news, ask New York Times. If you are looking for good news, ask me. We are ambassadors of good news. Can I hear you say hallelujah? Amen. Thank you once again, Dr. Strader, for giving us the opportunity to be here with you as a family. Before you sit down, lift up your Bible before you sit down. Those of you brethren from Canada, we are so happy to have you here with us. I thank God for the privilege of preaching in Canada for the last 27 years. Let me see your Bible lifted up. Say with me, this is my sword to defeat principalities and powers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. For the few years I have been in the ministry, which is almost 40 years, one of the greatest lessons I have learned is that nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve. And none is too small for him to pay attention. One day, as a young preacher, I came across the scripture I'm going to read tonight. Don't preach it too much, but just read it. There is power in the word of God. How many of you believe that? Oh, lift your hands and say, I believe in the word of God. Look at the book of Nahum. In America, you call it many things, but in English it's called Nahum. N-A-H-U-M. Nahum. Let's say that in American English. Oh, good. Thank God. I'm not too far from you. Look at verse 7. Nahum chapter 1. The Lord is good. Oh, somebody say that. Maybe I'm not talking of your own tonight. I'm talking of my own. My God is a good God. For years, as a young preacher, as a young man, I first heard that from the mouth of the man who is now the president of our university, Ora Robert. Something good is going to happen to you. And a few years ago, less than 30 years ago, I heard this said, 
God is a good God. Somebody say Amen. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. Listen to this. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. I am wondering how someone that is good, I who is in trouble, is permitted to hold him. May I make that a little slower. God is good. Say that. Now say that with me. Now say this with me. When I'm in trouble, he allows me to hold him with my trouble. Did anybody hear that? God has no trouble. How many of you believe that? Oh yes. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. The Lord God made the heaven and earth and the earth was void, not heaven. <laughs> they, every time there's trouble, there's not one in heaven like on earth. I've never heard earthquake in heaven. I've never heard thunder blast in heaven. I've never heard bomb in heaven. I've only read once in my Bible there was war in heaven. It didn't last too long. The man who caused the war in heaven was cast down. Somebody say hallelujah. Now listen to this. I want to make it as easy to you as I've made it easy for myself. God is good. The Lord is good. Say that two times. I didn't hear you. But when I'm in trouble, say that. He permits me to hold him. I may not make sense to you, but I'm making sense to myself. May I borrow you one more as I did this morning? All right. This man is a man of God. Whether you believe it or not, he is. <laughs> now, he's not just been a man of God, but he's a good man. Assuming that I am terrible. And assuming that I'm very, very bad. He stands and says, Benson it Hosa. I'm a good man. I'm a godly man. But whenever you are in trouble, hold me. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? All right. That's not American English. American English would be like this. This man is well fed. He has enough food in his house. Now he's saying to me, Benson it Hosa. Any day you are hungry, come to me for food. Did you hear what I'm saying? If he was worse than me, he can't help me. Did you hear that? If he's in more trouble than I am, he can't help me. But he has no trouble. He's good. Oh, somebody say he's good. The Lord is what? The Lord is what? Good. I want to make it easy for you to understand. When you are in trouble, you don't need a man with double trouble. You need a man that has no trouble to hold to, to take you out of trouble. It is like if I'm on the floor and I fall, I don't need a man in the pit to lift me up. Sir, can you lift me up? I'll sure try. <laughs> lift me up, sir. Now, why did he lift me up? He is standing. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
This man lifted me up because I was down. If he was there and I'm here and I'm looking for help, I don't need him. I need a man who is not in trouble like me to give me help. I need someone who is well to pray for me when I'm sick. I need someone who is alive to give me life when I'm dying. I don't need a dead man to pray for me to live. The Lord is good. Say that. Now, say it again. A stronghold. Did you hear that? God is what? Strong to hold. God is strong to hold when I'm in trouble. Oh my God, you didn't hear that. The Lord is good, say it. A stronghold for me when I'm in trouble. Join the three together. The Lord is good. Strong enough for me to hold when I am in trouble. Oh my God. Don't you think that's whom you need? That's whom I need. Look at what this prophet brought out. In the day of trouble, he's good. He knoweth them that trust in him. Thank God. Say, God, know me. I trust him. Look at the eighth verse. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an altar end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Look at verse 9. I said, Christian, what do you imagine against the Lord? Now that the Bible is telling you God is good, what is the thought in your heart? When I'm in trouble, do I still remember that God is good? That's what he's asking here. When things don't go the way I want them to go, do I change my opinion and think that the trouble is from God? His name is good. Oh, somebody said good. good. When I'm in trouble, he allows me to come to him. Say good. good. But the prophet is asking, the day you need sun and rain fall, what do you think of God? Is he still good? When you plan wedding, and suddenly the plan break down is God still good when you want to travel and your car break down is God still good the day you have your birthday and your car lost engine is God still good When you say tomorrow is my happy day and you lost someone very close to you, is God still good? What do you imagine against God? Don't forget, He's already good. Don't forget, He's a strong to hold in my days of trouble. Somebody should have said amen. But what do you imagine against God? What do you think of God when things are going adversarially against you? Hear what the prophet says. What do you imagine against God? He will make another end. Affliction shall not rise up again the second time. That for you, sir. That's for you, sir.
that's for you sir that's for you sir for every affliction you have experienced you shall not have a resurrection oh my god oh my god whatever tribulation whatever trial you saw once it shall not come back again if i were you i would jump up and say my my affliction shall not come a second time i, I didn't say you i'm talking of me i say if i were you i would say this to myself my affliction shall not have resurrection steve that's for you every ugly trial you have passed through it shall not come back second time Every trial you have passed through, he shall not come a second time. All the tears you have shed, he shall not come back a second time. Every shame you have borne, he shall not come back a second time. Somebody say loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Affliction. Your affliction. Your tribulation. Your test to your faith. Shall not come back a second time. Somebody say amen. amen. Many times. It, it hurts us. Beyond forgetfulness. When we are hot. Do you know the day God rescued me, Dr. Strader? When I read in my Bible, Jesus said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. He didn't say it will not pain you, but he said it will not hurt you. It can pain you without hurting you. It can pain you. You sometimes I do things to give you pain, but Jesus said, If I give you pain, turn your pain to gain. Hallelujah. Don't allow the pain I give you to become a hurt to your spirit. Many times, those you have helped, those you helped turn their back against you but he said don't let it hurt you when the people you try to lift try to put you down don't be hurt when those you bless curse you don't be hurt when persons you are trying to feed give you a blow don't be hurt when anyone you lifted up is looking for something to put you down don't be hurt but know this your affliction shall not come back a second time do you understand what i'm saying tonight god is asking me to tell someone not everybody but maybe one person whatever that thing is that afflicted you before is not coming back a second time do you understand do you understand what i'm saying tonight has any one of you ever experienced affliction oh if you are one of them stand up if you have ever seen any affliction since you were born well i know you live in america so there's no trouble in america but fine <laughs> but is there anyone here tonight this is prophecy God brought me here for. I, I want to I want to be myself. Is there anyone that has ever experienced affliction? I'm talking of something is so hot you you almost lost control. 
I'm asking you, have you ever passed through a situation sometimes you wish it was not happening to you? Is there anybody like that here tonight? Is there anyone since you were born was once disappointed? Yeah? Oh, is there anyone that have at any time experienced tears you didn't call for? Almost all my tears, I've never sent for them. They just come. <laughs> Many times that I'm in trouble, I never wrote an application to say, trouble, come to my house. I just see him arrive and I say, what are you doing here? He say, I'm already here. But listen to what the Bible sent me to tell you tonight. Whatsoever that pain, that grief, that torture, that trouble, that afflicted you pain it shall not come a second time you may be seated but i'm sent by god to tell you your last time of a repeated affliction was yesterday I don't know what that means I don't know the meaning but I'm so grateful my own affliction we have no resurrection it shall not come a second time the prophet continued in verse 10 look at his boss for why they be folding together as tongues, and why they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as trouble, fury dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Verse 12. Thus saith the Lord. Though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. I pray this will be for somebody. If it's for no one else, it's for you, sir. imaginable to think you can be serving a good God and something terrible happen to you and the Lord said they have imagined evil I imagine good for you what do you think of me that's what they think of you. but what do you think of me that's what God asked me People have imagined evil against you. The enemies have said something terrible about you. What do you say of yourself? Because the world afflicted me and God refused my affliction. <laughs> learn, sir, learn how to turn your scars to stars. Never you let the devil have the last say about your life. Why? Affliction shall not come back a second time. How many of you can say amen? amen. I just pray that what I'm saying tonight will help you. Whenever you find yourself in trouble, know that good is coming. You didn't hear that. Anytime you see yourself in tears believe that cheers is coming anytime you see yourself with obstacles 
know that miracles are coming oh somebody should have said amen to that why affliction shall not come back a second time God is not a wicked God God does not reward our good with evil when we do something good in his name when we do something good for him he doesn't say because thou hast so served me thou payest thy tithe thou givest thy offering therefore shall thou be in trouble God is not like that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him somebody say amen, amen. look at this verse 12 I want to repeat it again to your hearing hear this this is prophecy for me and you thus says the Lord who is speaking here I'm asking you who is speaking thus says the Lord though they be quiet and likewise many yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through though I have afflicted thee I will afflict thee no more may I ask you one more time just by the lifting of your hand how many of you have passed through trial once how many of you have seen pain more than once oh in Africa we see pain every day how many of you have been short of money sometimes oh God you are in America God's own country oh yes how many of you have at any time received reproach how many of you at any time have received insult accusation God asked me to tell you I permitted that one but I will not permit any other one did anybody hear what I'm saying the one you experienced before God knew it but he said no new one is coming did anybody hear that all right 13th verse for now will i break his yoke from off thee oh somebody stand up stand up stand up stand up oh rama mama <laughs> you didn't hear that i hope you hear that <laughs> I hope you hear that Steve did you hear that God says that thing that cost you shame that thing that gave you tears and became a heavy load and a yoke around your neck I tried this afternoon when I got home to push this message aside and God said you either preach it or I kill you <laughs> tell everyone afflicted the load shall be taken from their shoulders <laughs> put your two hands on your shoulders and march forward here now quickly place your two hands on your shoulder please no matter how big you are get up and come forward
Just rest your hand on your shoulder. I don't know what you believe. But I believe that when the Bible says, Thus says the Lord. That's enough for me. Do you know what it means to have a repeated heart? When you close your eyes, you can't sleep. Do you know what it is sometimes? When there's food on your table and you have no appetite? I'm talking of me. I don't know about you. Do you know what it means sometimes? When you are looking for joy and sorrow comes. And you don't know what to do. You see wrong, not because you are wrong, but because wrong wants to see you. But God said, I should tell you, affliction is not coming back a second time. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. When it first came, not because you were wrong, that's what God took. But he says, he says here, God is speaking. For now will I break the yoke, the yoke from off that weight, the heaviness, the load, Press you down. God says, up. So lift it out of your shoulder. Oh, Baba ye kele boho. Shela la la ma. Moram boje kela baria. Shila baba ha kendo lo boje kele. I don't know how long it has taken you. But I have joy to tell you. The yoke is off your shoulder. The yoke is off your shoulder. The yoke is off your shoulder. The grief is off your shoulder. The tears off your shoulder. The load off your neck. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I have seen many yokes. I've shed many tears for preaching the gospel. But I will never forget the day God told me, Benson, my son, from this night, the yoke is off your shoulder. And from that day, I say this to you, from that day till now, any time I see yoke coming, I say, God, you told me, it's off. You bore my grief. You carried my sorrow. It shall not come back a second time. Somebody say hallelujah. This is prophet for someone tonight. Maybe the Lord has been there since you were born. <laughs> Maybe that Lord has been so heavy. You don't know where to turn. It could be marriage load, it could be business load, it could be ministry affliction. It can even be family inherited. But the good news is this. I, the Lord, take it off. <laughs>
from the day God told me the load is off my shoulder in the ministry I used to have happiness when there's something good happening but God said from today the joy the joy I give you I live with you not as the world give give I to you Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit <laughs> you are the Lord carrier you are our body bearer from the shoulder of your servants affliction is gone affliction is gone affliction is gone in the name of Jesus off 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 your shoulder the load is gone oh the load is gone the load is gone the Lord is gone. 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 In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. The Lord is gone. 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 It's gone. In Jesus' name, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. The Lord is up from your shoulder. In Jesus' name, let it go. 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 In the name of Jesus, let it go. Let it go. The Lord is gone. It's gone. It's gone. In Jesus name the Lord is off your shoulder now from this night in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name let it go in the name of Jesus let it go let it go let it go let it go In the name of Jesus, off your shoulder, let it go, let it go, let it go. I remove the load in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Every load, leave. Every load, I yes. take it away. Yes. In the name of Jesus, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, the load is off you. The tears off you. The pain off you. The sorrow off you. Let it go! Let it go! Let it go! In the name of Jesus! 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 Then go! Body leave! In Jesus name! Be healed! Be healed! Be free, 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 let it go, let it go, of you, of you, of you, of you, of you, of you. Let her get up, let her get up from the wheelchair. Come on, move, get up. Pull the chair back. Go with your feet. It's gone in Jesus' name. Let it go. 
get up stand to your feet be strong in the Lord be strong in the Lord take your wheelchair back in the name of Jesus free from your shoulder leave leave <laughs> oh Rabbi Maya let it go let it go off your shoulder off your shoulder off your shoulder let it go let it go come on it's not yours anymore it's gone from you it's gone in the name of jesus gone it's gone it's gone from today you are free let it go free <laughs> Free, 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 free. Come on, let it go. In Jesus' name, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Peace. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wave your hand and say hallelujah. Oh, say with me, I'm free. The yoke is broken. It's taken from my shoulder. I'm loose. I'm free. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to this covenant. May I ask all of you right now to stand to your feet. Everybody get up. Get up and hold somebody's hand left and right. Get up, get up. Usher, force them up. Force everyone up. Arise and shine. Your light is come. Rise up. Get up. Hold someone's hand left and right. Say I'm free. I didn't hear you. Louder. Amen. All right, just quiet now for a minute. Open your eyes and lose your hand and look at me straight. God told me from 315, 245. Yeah, what well, it was this afternoon. Till five minutes to five say to all who carried load is off i hope somebody's hearing what i'm saying listen prophecy is more than laughing prophecy is more than falling down prophecy is more than rolling on the ground prophet is Thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you. The yoke is off your shoulder. <laughs> Somebody say loud hallelujah. It may shock you to know how many years this man and I have served in the same board of regent. But three times in the past I've come to see this place. Only 
last night God revealed to me to tell him this walk will not hurt you he has used you to establish it it shall be sustained no man will destroy while you live and from this night the yoke is off your shoulder oh lift your hand say the yoke is off my shoulder say it loud the yoke is off my shoulder say big hallelujah. hallelujah now listen to two more promises god gave me to give you then i i finish what i'm here for hear this and the lord had given a commandment concerning thee commandment not a suggestion commandment concerning thee that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods will i cut off the graven image and the molten image i will make thy <laughs> oh god <laughs> from this day tearing you to pieces no more you are no more you of yesterday Carl your name changed this morning your name changed this morning I want to do something tonight before close if his financial burden is off if his married burden is off for the load of your shoulder this message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services Iwo Media Services inspirational world-class production stretches people success strengthens people success brings joy success brings happiness so many people want success so many people have achieved success quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty some of you know how to get there you don't know how to remove the but how do you maintain success? Is it in the buying of stocks or investing in real estate? To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Find out from this life-transforming teaching by Archbishop B.A. Idahosa on how to maintain success and you will always be on top in life. I'm speaking on the subject today how to maintain success. Christianity was the inability for people to have a will to live. They accepted everything the devil brought their way as if it didn't matter. He gave them power against. It's not enough to come to church and rattle with your tongue. Do something with the power that Jesus gave you. 
If you are going to preach the gospel, don't imitate any man that failed. Don't be too humble to look like a man who failed. Look for a man who has succeeded. The only man who will criticize you and you listen, or you, or you, in your life, is the man that has done twice what you are trying to do once. The only person when he criticizes you and you say, listen, is the person that have done twice what you are trying to do once. So when Jesus called the first 12 disciples, I love the place he said, and when he had called the 12, he gave them power against Powerful, but against power against all unclean spirit. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production.